first, we have a presentation from Altec Chemicals with the ticker code ATC. To tell us more about their high purity alumina project, today we are joined by Managing Director Iggy Tan. Good morning, Iggy. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, so firstly, uh, welcome. Uh, Altec Chemicals is an Australian company. We're listed on the ASX. And what I want to do is to talk about the future of lithium-ion batteries because high purity alumina uh, fits into where lithium batteries are heading to. And I guess um, it's uh, fair to say that the, 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 the vision of for lithium ion batteries have been set by Tesla and they have announced in their last battery day that they want to half the cost of their production. And they've launched their new cell, the 4680 cell, which is five times more energy and six times more power. They've also announced that they want to have three terawatts of uh, battery factories uh, by 2030. And that's equivalent to 20 gigafactories uh, around the world. And the other thing that was interesting when they announced uh, the battery day was the increased use of silicon in the anodes. And I want to talk about the future of silicon and how HPA fits in as well. Um, in a lithium battery, on the positive side, you have the cathode material. And when you charge a battery, um, essentially the lithium ions go from the uh, positive side to the negative side in the graph line. And when you discharge the battery, uh, the lithium ions go back from the, uh, the, 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 electro, uh, the graphite side, uh, but 10% of the lithium is actually left on uh, the anode side. And this is called the first cycle lithium loss capacity. So before the customer even gets a battery, 10% of your lithium uh, becomes inactive. And essentially, uh, what happens in a battery, uh, the lithium coats the graphite particles and it forms a, uh, uh, an SEI layer around the graphite material and all the lithium becomes inactive. So uh, this is a big problem for the battery industry because 10% of your lithium uh, doesn't take part in the, the, the future of the battery. Um, also during the performance of the battery, the cracks that happen in the SEI layer and then more lithium is absorbed uh, and also during the performance of the battery, um, hydrofluoric ions uh, in the, the electrolyte breaks down the SEI layer and, and then more lithium is absorbed onto the, the particle as well. So there's a continued degradation of lithium on that graphite particle. Now, why is alumina being used on, in the graphite side? It's been proven by a lot of research around the world that it improves the first cycle loss uh, improves the high rate performance and improves the fast charging capability and also improves the safety of the battery. So for example, this is a typical work that's been done where uh, uncoated graphite uh, versus coated graphite shows that the coated graphite battery has 10% uh, 10, 10 more any energy capacity after 200 cycles. So this is very important for the future. This is a great example of uh, the coated graphite with alumina affecting the safety of the battery. So on the left-hand side is a nail penetration test. Uh, it shows that the battery virtually combusts. Temperatures get up to 600 degrees. And on the right-hand side, uh, the batteries uh, are basically intact and the temperature only gets up to 90 degrees. So uh, coated graphite with alumina uh, helps with the safety performance of the battery. Now there are three ways of coating alumina onto uh, graphite, the vapor method, solid method, and the liquid method. And the vapor method are atomic layer deposition, but it's very costly, complex, and it doesn't lead to mass production. We're focused on the liquid method, and it's really the most promising and easy to commercialize method. So essentially what we do is we coat a graphite particle with a fine layer of alumina, and by having a luminar layer, it stops for the, uh, the uh, lithium from forming on the graphite material. Um, we also find that um, any other hydrofluoric uh, corrosive material is absorbed by the alumina layer, and, and it also would help with the lithium degradation. And, and what, what it does is when we coat the graphite, this is what we are aiming to have, a reduced first cycle loss, which is an extension of the battery life. Um, 
We've done this in the laboratory. This is a, uh, on the left-hand side is a graphite particle with our alumina coating. And you can see the very thin continuous layer of alumina at about two nanometers thin, very, very thin particles. Uh, we've taken it to the, uh, the battery test now, uh, and we've gone coin battery test, and it shows very performing, very positive uh, performance in, in the battery. I want to talk a bit about the, uh, um, the silicon uh, as a future anode material. Silicon is a very promising, promising material in anodes. It's got 10 times the capacity of graphite. So from a layman's point of view, there are 10 times more sites that the lithium can sit on. So it's, if, it's this, if it's that promising, why isn't lit, uh, silicon being used in commercial batteries today? There are really, really three problems. First one is that there is a volume expansion of the silicon particles where it fractures. Uh, number two, instead of the first cycle loss of 10%, it's close to 50%. So 50% of lithium is, is lost. Uh, and also it has a higher fade uh, in the battery. So um, these are some of the three problems, but the, the potential for silicon is enormous. So this is a graph that shows graphite material uh, at 372 milliamps per gram. If you add 10% silicon, it jumps to 693. 20% silicon, it goes to 1,000. And you can see the potential by adding silicon in the battery. I mentioned about this fast fade. This is what happens with silicon if you don't resolve the three problems it actually is detrimental to the battery. So what we, we have is um, this fracturing of the silicon particle uh, on lithiation. Uh, and also when it does fracture, it has delamination on the anode side. And this is a big problem for batteries. We believe that we have technology using the alumina coating technology to resolve this fracturing problem. So we believe that our alumina coating uh, can resolve this fracturing problem and it will be a, a big game changer to the uh, lithium ion battery industry. On, on the, uh, this slide, it shows our silicon particle with alumina coating. We've now taken it to batteries and we've seen very promising uh, stability results. And obviously there's a lot more work, but it's a very promising future for our high purity alumina into lithium batteries. Now, this is a great example of how this can impact in the uh, in the end product. This is a Tesla Model 3 with zero silicon. It does about 400 kilometers on the first charge. If you add 10% silicon into that battery, it, it goes 700 kilometers on a single charge. 20% drives it to 1,000 kilometers and 30% 1,300 kilometers. So the, the potential is enormous. So our future is using our high purity alumina to coat graphite particles, silicon particles, and put, to, put it together in an anode of a battery. So uh, to, to feed that material, we, um, we are doing a pre-feasibility study on a battery materials coating plant in Germany. Uh, Germany uh, uh, fits into the European strategy. Uh, we're very much focused on Europe because essentially the story of the lithium ion battery will be Europe in the next decade. There's some 600 gigawatts of uh, battery capacity being built in Europe, all driven by regulations. And we are very focused on providing our high purity alumina into Europe. If we come back to our high purity alumina plant that feeds that to the European coating plant, our project is uh, well developed. Uh, high purity alumina is used in lithium ion batteries as well as LEDs. Uh, and the, the growth of the business is expected to grow from 30,000 tons to 270,000 tons by 2030. And there's, there's a shortage of supply forecasted. Uh, our project is well developed. We've got a mine in Australia with 250 years of mine life material. Our processing plant will be in Johor in Malaysia. Uh, we have disruptive technology in that uh, we have a low quartile cost we have patent protection, and we have been accredited as a green process because we essentially use 49% less greenhouse gases uh, to make the same ton of HPA as the current production. We also have a 10-year offtake Mitsubishi agreement, and we have a build contract with SMS Group for a fixed price uh, and guarantees of the process and the quality and so on. 
I just want to give you an update of where we are on the financing. We've, to date, we've spent uh, 50 to 60 million in the development of the project. We've conducted the stage one and stage two construction. Uh, the NPV pro of the project is about half a billion US dollars. The EBITDA is about 76 million uh, uh, per annum. And we are targeting uh, the project use of funds of 390 million. 190 million of senior debt has been completed with KFW IPAX Bank. And we're now progressing to uh, the secondary debt, which is the listed green bond process. Uh, we're targeting 144 million of uh, green bonds, of which 100 million will go through as secondary debt for the project. Now, a lot of work has been done. We've done all the due. Uh, the, the group that is doing it out of the UK have done all the due diligence. They've uh, conducted all the legal due diligence. The prospectus and the facility agreement is uh, largely completed. And we will be looking at uh, that, that company to start the marketing process uh, during the, the next quarter. So far, the soft sounding of the green bonds are very positive. And uh, while we're working on that, we also have various mandates to look after the uh, project equity part of the project. And um, as you know, we've constructed, we've commenced construction on, on, the, uh, on the Malaysian site, really to de-risk the project. Uh, and so that when the funding comes through, we're in a, a good state to commence the project. So thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you for that, Iggy. Um, one of the questions that actually has come through, you just did answer it, but I will ask it again. Um, so do you still plan to proceed with the construction of the processing plant in Malaysia? And if so, how is the design proceeding? Yeah, so we, we, have, um, we have now um, are waiting for the uh, finance to come through. As soon as the finance comes through, uh, we will have a running start uh, in Malaysia. The reason we started the construction process uh, we build the maintenance building, uh, substation, underground tanks, uh, is that we can de-risk that project. So we know the ground conditions, we know the contractors, we've got all the permits to get on site. And, and generally when finance comes through, there's always a delay in getting your permits, environmental permits to get on site. We've de-risked all that. And essentially the project is ready to go when finance comes through. So the, the project will be built. Uh, we are now just kind of uh, finance the, finalize the secondary bonds. Wonderful, well, thank you for joining us today, Iggy. And of course, a copy of today's presentation will be available online on brokerbriefing.com in the coming days.